Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. Hey everyone, before today's episode gets started, I just want to talk a little bit about the fight against Alzheimer's. For those of you that don't know, my family has been impacted by Alzheimer's and my wife and I are members of the Young Champions for the Minnesota North Dakota chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. The world may look a little different right now, but one thing hasn't changed. The Alzheimer's Association's commitment to ending Alzheimer's. This year, Walk 10 Alzheimer's is everywhere on every sidewalk, track, and trail. Due to COVID, this year won't be a large in-person gathering. Instead, everyone will be walking in small teams of friends and family. We are all still walking and fundraising for the same thing, a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. So I'm asking that if you can, please support our team for the Alzheimer's Association's Walk to End Alzheimer's. This walk is the world's largest event to raise awareness and funds for Alzheimer's care, support, and research. Thank you in advance, and you can find information and links below. And now, back to the show. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Court Studio. Welcome to the show. So, on today's episode, I've got a very exciting custom commander for you from the Custom Magic community on an episode that I'm calling A Leviathan That Just Wants Some Friends. It's a very heartwarming tale of a... Well, you'll see. Let's jump into it. So, Xenix Progenitive Rage was made by the Dark Side PSA, a member of the Custom Magic community. Xenix is a 6-6 Leviathan horror that costs 4 green, blue, red, and it has flash. It also has the beginning of your upkeep create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control, except it has when this creature enters the battlefield, it fights target creature you don't control. So first off, this commander has flash, which can come in really handy for a couple of reasons. Number one, if it's in your command zone and someone's thinking about attacking you, it's going to be hard for them to justify attacking you with anything other than something bigger than a 6-6, because you can just flash your commander in and block and kill whatever creature they're attacking with. You can also utilize this to keep up mana, and then cast it right before your turn so that you can get that upkeep trigger. When I first saw this commander, the very first card that it reminded me of was Progenitor Mimic, and this would make a great card in the deck as well. Progenitor Mimic is a 0-0 shapeshifter that costs 4 green-blue, and it has, you may have Progenitor Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it has at the beginning of your upkeep. If this creature isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. And keep in mind that unlike Xenix, Progenitor Mimic can actually make copies of our opponent's creatures as well. Now, Paradox Haze is another card that immediately came to mind when I saw this commander. It says, at the beginning of Enchanted Player's first upkeep each turn, that player gets an additional upkeep step after this step. So basically, we're just getting two of those triggers instead of one. Being able to make two copies of a creature with Xenex is huge. Again, double the ETBs, double the creatures on the board, double the fighting, lots of fun happening there. Stranic Resonator is another way to do this that we have to do. We do have to pay for it, uh, paying two and tapping it to copy target triggered ability we control. We can choose new targets for the copy. Again, that's going to be well worth it, paying two mana to essentially make a copy of any of our creatures and having it fight, and getting the ETB again is going to be huge. Now let's talk about those fighting cards that we're going to have in this deck. There are a few that I'm going to go over right now with Foe Fo Razor Regent, Knife of the Dire Hunt, and Thorn Mammoth. Foe Razor Regent has, when it enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creature you don't control. Whenever a creature you control fights, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it at the beginning of the next end step. So essentially, this not only fights, but it also is going to make our creatures bigger after they do fight. Uh, they obviously have to survive the fight, and then survive until the end step, but when they do, they get extra plus 1 plus 1 counters. Knight of Dire Hunt says, whenever one or more creatures you control fight or becomes blocked, draw a card. That's an incredible amount of card advantage with a deck like this that's going to be fighting, also going to be swinging with some big creatures that are going to be blocked, or either our opponents block them or they're going to take a lot of damage. And then Knife of the Dire Hunt also has, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay two and gruel. If you do, double target creature's power until end of turn, that creature must be blocked this combat of Fable. Again, we're going to have some really big creatures on the board. We can double up their power, force our opponents to block, and deal out a ton of damage to their creatures. Thorn Mammoth is another one that can be really good in this deck for a couple of reasons. It has whenever Thorn Mammoth or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature you don't control. Notice that it said up to one target creature. So essentially, Thorn Mammoth is a 6-6. It can take out most creatures, but it might not be able to take out certain ones. Or we don't want to make it fight multiple times if we don't have to. So when we're having another creature enter the battlefield, thanks to our commander's trigger, we're going to be getting extra fights off of Thorn Mammoth. This can be a great way to control our opponent's boards and take out all their small key creatures. Next up, let's talk about Acidic Slime. Acidic Slime is going to be a fantastic card for this deck. It's got Death Touch, so essentially anything it fights is dead. And then when Acidic Slime enters the battlefield, we destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. So it's a great piece of utility to copy and get an extra kind of ability to destroy whatever we need to essentially, outside of really enchantments and planeswalkers, because this is basically going to kill a creature and then again an artifact, enchantment, or land when it comes into play. 
We can also have a utility piece like Woodland Bellower in this deck. When it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a non-legendary green creature card with converted mana cost three or less, put it onto the battlefield and shuffle our library. So like a Reclamation Sage or something like that, essentially, this can basically be a toolbox kind of creature that we can copy when we need to to go get that creature, bring it into play that's got a good ETB that we can copy again with our commander if we need to. Hornet Queen is a great one to consider as well. It also has Death Touch, so again, like Acidic Slime, we can take out anything once we have it come in and fight. And then whenever it enters the battlefield, we create four 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens with flying and Death Touch, so we basically have this Death Touch army that we can cre keep creating over and over again. Up next, though, let's talk about giving our opponents tokens, though, with something like Pursued Whale. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent creates a 1-1 one, one red pirate creature token with This creature can't block, and creatures you control attack each combat of Fable. Spells your opponent's cast that target Pursued Whale costs three more to cast. So basically, if we keep making tokens of this, our opponent's going to be forced to keep attacking. And again, this deck is going to be running a ton of big creatures, so they're probably not going to be attacking into us, so they're going to have to swing at each other unless they want to lose their army. And raise four runners can be a fantastic addition to this deck as well. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures we control get plus two, plus two, and gain vigilance and trample on of turn. That's just a great pump effect that can help our creatures attack and keep them back and get some damage through. Terror Mount Velis is another fantastic card when it comes to attacking. When it enters the battlefield, creatures we control gain double strike until end of turn. Again, being able to just do that during our upkeep with our commander can ensure that we're going to be swinging for a lot of damage on that turn. Up next, though, let's talk about some cards that can really come in handy and kind of take over the game once we get some extra copies of them. Tide Spout Tyrant has, whenever you cast a spell, return target permanent to his owner's hand. So if we keep making copies of this with our commander, they're going to be staying on the battlefield. And then as soon as we start casting spells, we're going to be bouncing multiple permanents per spell cast. And it's going to be really hard for our opponents to keep up with that. We can even bounce lands with this, so good luck with that. We can also just take control of our opponent's creatures with something like a Molten Primordial. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures that gain haste until end of turn. Basically, temporarily threatening three creatures every single turn can be a huge win factor for this deck. Age of Treachery is obviously another way we can go. When it enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent, so we just straight up gain control of it. And at the beginning of our end step, if we control three or more permanents we don't own, we draw three cards. So this can be card advantage as well as permanently gaining control of certain things. Again, making extra copies of this with Xenex can be really brutal. And yeah, if you've got, uh, if you play standard, you're going to know Agent of Treachery, or at least before it was banned. Anyways, Xenex Regenerate seems like a really cool commander. I really like kind of the big creature fighting kind of, big explosive ETBs. But yeah, now it's my turn to hear from you. I'd love to hear your opinion on this commander. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.